I love insects, but even I hate these guys. Let's talk about plant pests. What's up fellow plant enthusiasts? My name is Dylan Bain and this is Bain's Botanicals. Today we're going to be talking about plant pests. Now the majority of our plant pests are actually insects, which isn't very fun because some insects are gross, even though I am an insect lover. Like I, I love being out in nature and kind of exploring bugs and, and uh, beetles and things. And I think that um, insects play a, a vital role in our ecosystem and they're just trying to do their thing. You know, they're just trying to live life and breathe and eat food just like we do. So I think that uh, they get a lot of slack from people, maybe not slack, flack, maybe that's the right word. They get a lot of grief from people that is kind of unnecessary. But these guys, these guys are bad news. Let's go ahead and cover this. Um, what are the causes of plant pests? Well, sometimes they just show up. It just sort of happens. I mean, where do spider mites really come from? Sure, you can bring them in off another plant, but oftentimes, even if all of your plants are insect-free, they'll just show up. I don't know how it happens. I mean, especially if you have something like a, um, like a Hedera helix, like an English ivy. You could set that thing in any room by itself and it's still somehow gonna get spider mites. I don't get it. Uh, you might also run into pests when you overwater a plant. Uh, fungus gnats in particular really like moist soil. Uh, if you let a plant dry out too much, that's another problem. Spider mites, for instance, they really like dry conditions. So the other thing about over and under watering is that you're putting stress on your plant. And when plants are stressed out, they tend to get more insect problems. They just, um, they just, it's kind of like people, if you're running your body too hard, you're more likely to get sick because you're not nourishing yourself, you're not taking care of yourself. And plants can't take care of themselves. They need us to water them and everything because we have them inside. So, you know, it falls to us to be good plant parents and make sure that they're taken care of. Uh, another cause would be new growth. You'll notice that new growth, because it's a little more tender, it's more susceptible to problems. So I've noticed in the past that if I get spider mites on a plant, sometimes I only get it on the new growth of the plant because if you touch a new leaf, it's a lot softer. It's a lot um, less uh, hardy. So those insects know that and so they find it and they can sink their little pinchers into the leaf a lot easier than if it's a full-fledged, you know, grown leaf that has a much harder cuticle, which is like the outside of the plant. Um, Let's go through, let's go through some of these pests. Uh, these are just the main ones. There are other ones, of course, you know, the insect kingdom, what's well, not a kingdom, the insect phylum is, uh, well, no, insects are a class. They're in the phylum arthropoda. So uh, arthropods being like crustaceans and, you know, arachnids and insects are a class within that. Anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> So we have uh, aphids. Aphids are the little white guys that you'll see usually in clusters. Um, they just look like bugs. I mean, they just, there's nothing really special about them other than they're in groups. I've never had aphids, uh, so I've never had that problem, but I know that uh, they're pretty easy to get rid of. It's just one of those things where you need, we'll talk about remedies later, but they're one of the easier ones to get rid of. Uh, as kind of a side note, uh, ladybugs, <laughs> they love aphids. They will shred aphids. And if you look up a video on YouTube of ladybugs eating aphids, it's kind of hilarious because ladybugs are so cute and they're just so gentle because, you know, they don't bite or anything. They're very pretty. But uh, you give them an aphid and they will just shred that thing. It's awesome. Some bigger places, like let's say that somebody has a kind of greenhouse, if they get aphids really bad, they, they, you can buy ladybugs and just release them into this greenhouse and they'll just destroy. But then of course you kind of have a, a ladybug issue. So not always recommended. Um, fungus gnats are annoying. 
I mean, they're more of a menace than they are a problem for your plants. They can be a problem if there's too many of them, but generally they're just annoying as hell. Like you just, you go to water your plant and all these gnats just fly up. A couple of the specific remedies for fungus gnats, um, I've seen people do kind of a makeshift glue trap where they stick it to like a, like a little dowel rod and they stick it in the plant and they cover a little square with maybe um, petroleum jelly or glue or whatever and it just becomes kind of a little makeshift fly trap. Uh, fly paper, I've seen people use fly paper. Uh, that can be kind of effective. I don't have fungus gnats, I haven't tried any of these methods, but these are ones that I've heard other people doing. Um, there is also a, I believe there is some sort of bacteria uh, that actually kills fungus gnat larvae and you can water your plant with that and it'll kill them. I don't remember what it's called. I've never tried it myself, like I said, but if you have fungus gnats real bad, that's worth looking into. Also, uh, another thing about fungus gnats is that adults can lay like 300 eggs at a time. So you have one gnat making 300 eggs and they hatch within like a week. That's why they multiply so fast. I mean, insects in general, you know, lay eggs in large quantities. We also have mealy bugs. Mealy bugs, if you look at them really closely, normally you'll see them, they're in kind of like fuzzy webbing. It's not webbing like a spider web, but it's just kind of a fuzzy little clump. And if you're able to look at one of the actual mealy bugs, they look like little roly polies. And they are actually isopods, like, um, like the ones you find under a rock. Uh, so they're kind of, <laughs> it's sad, but they're kind of cute, but they're bad for plants. They suck the juice out of plants, no good. I've seen mealy bugs on cacti more than I have anything else. I think any plant can get them, but um, think about the ridges of like a barrel cactus. That's the perfect place for a mealy bug to get in there and be safe. I mean, it's protected from the spines. It's got a nice tight enclosed area that it can just do its thing. So um, mealy bugs, as far as prevention, you generally just, not prevention, but to get rid of them, you generally just scrape them off. Uh, you can remove them by hand too if you're, you know, <laughs> if you're into that, I guess. Uh, I would probably just use a Q-tip, cotton swab, whatever, and just kind of get them off of there. So they're not too big of a problem. Uh, scale, scale is uh, similar to mealybugs. They don't look the same though. Scale actually just looks like a scale. I mean, that they're just a little insect that basically attaches to a plant and they sink their little suckers in there and they just feed on it. And the interesting thing about scale is they spend most of their life in one place. So in the same place that they're feeding, there's a good chance they're just going to reproduce there as well and have more scale babies. <laughs> I'm sure there's a word for them. Fry, is that? No, fry I think is shrimp. Anyway, um, I've never had scale either, but scale is another one you can just scrape off. It's also one that you can wash off, which we'll, we'll get to some general care methods here in a minute, but um, scale's usually not that big of a problem either. Um, some of the less common ones would be like thrips and whitefly. Uh, they're different, but they, they do look kind of similar in that they're kind of just like white gnats. And um, they're just, they're really easy to get rid of. They're not, they're not that big of a deal, but uh, you'll see them usually when you water. My cat's getting into the curtains, it's fine. You'll see them usually when you water and they'll just fly up out of the soil. Could be fungus gnats too though. The last one I have is, uh, in my opinion, the worst one, spider mites. And spider mites, they're not technically an insect. They are an arachnid, they have eight legs, um, they don't have six legs like insects, so they are biologically very different from these other pests, but uh, they are a problem. They're only about the size, I believe it's like a 50th of an inch, or, a 50th of, or maybe a 50th of a millimeter. I don't know. They're microscopic almost. You can barely see them moving, but um, they will destroy a plant. And you wouldn't think something so small could be such a big problem, but they are. The best way to kind of see if you have them, normally a plant will start to get like yellow dots on it. Like you'll start to see the plant just look sickly on some of the leaves. Um, that's usually one sign 
And if you just look at your plant, you'll notice um, I don't I don't just I don't just have spider mice laying around, thank goodness. But if you look at I'm trying to grab a plant. Here's one. Come here. This is my um, red arrow sangonium here. You'll notice webs that get kind of down at the base of the leaf, and you'll also notice that you'll get webs on the underside of the leaf. That's normally where you'll see them. And again, it's just kind of strategic because that's that's like the best place for them to make a web. And it, the, doing it underneath the leaf gives them protection from the elements. It gives them protection from potential predators, things like that. It just gives them a good state to uh, do their thing, which is destroy plants. Um, do, do, do. Stay. Another thing that you might notice with spider mites is that you'll start to get leaf drop. And the leaves that drop will, again, they'll have some scarring on them in the form of yellow dots. And uh, the plant knows that there's a problem. That's, that's the basic list. Like I said, there's other ones, but uh, those are most of the ones that you'll see. So where do I want to go with this next? The thing that you want to do more than anything else is be proactive. Anybody can get these insect pests and most of us have had them in one form or another, but the best thing you can do is be proactive. When you're going around watering, make sure that you're looking at your plants. Look for any signs of disease. Look for any signs of insect problems. Lift up the leaves. Just kind of give them a good once over and, and make sure that they're doing okay. Uh, that Because it's best if you catch these things early. If you find a plant and you haven't looked at it in a while and it's covered in spider mites, I mean, you could salvage it, but it's just at that point, you almost should just throw it out just to be safe. And I've had that happen with English ivy, of course. I've had that happen with Hamalamina. It seems to be uh, susceptible to spider mites as well, to the point that I was just like, you know what, forget this. You're impossible to please and, you know, just bye-bye. So I don't, I don't have any Hamalaminas or English ivy. Um, so yeah, being proactive, check your plants, make sure that you're watering them uh, at the rate that is conducive to um, health You know, for that specific plant. If it's a fern, make sure that you're keeping it watered, keeping the soil moist. If it's a cactus, make sure you're letting it dry out and letting it stay dry for a while. And this will prevent your plant from getting stressed and it'll prevent uh, the problem with some of these pests. The other thing that you can do that uh, I've heard, I haven't done this myself, but people say that you can breathe on your plants. Maybe you're already talking to them. I've heard people talk to their plants. I'm not judging. Uh, I guess I do sometimes. Like if I see a plant that has a yellow leaf, I'll be like, don't start that. You know, that's, that's about the extent of my dialogue with my plants. Um, but if you breathe on them, that can cause any little insect pests to move because they're reacting to that carbon dioxide. And they say that it's nice for your plants too because plants use carbon dioxide to photosynthesize uh, and they respirate oxygen for us. So that's nice. Uh, let's get to remedies. A lot of these pests have some very general uh, remedies that you can use for any of these pests. You can use insecticidal soaps. I would make sure that you know what ingredients are in it I would lean toward organic more than synthetic. Uh, and when it comes to something like an insecticidal soap, you'll want to make sure that you maybe do a little test spot first, because you don't really know how your plant's going to react. And you want to make sure that you measure the amount correctly. You don't want it to be too strong. You want to make sure that it's diluted properly before you use it. Um, another thing you can do is neem oil. I haven't done neem oil. Uh, I have some. I just haven't had the need to use it yet. Neem oil is kind of a more organic approach that uh, spider mites especially uh, really don't like neem oil. So if you have spider mites, that's a good go-to. I have also used specifically on spider mites diluted alcohol in a spray bottle. And what I'll do is, let's grab a different plant. Let's grab this guy. This is, 
not Plectranthus, that's Swedish ivy. I think this is Pleurandra, because this is one of those plants that's gotten tossed around a few times into different uh, genera. Anyway, um, if this had spider mites, I think the first thing I would do personally is just get some diluted alcohol in a spray bottle, and I would just spray the heck out of it. And I'd let it sit for maybe five minutes, and then I would spray it down like in the sink under some warm water just to really flush hang on now i'm looking is that a mealybug you guys are you serious right now i've just bragged about not having pests and i'm looking at this thing look at those you can see them in the video look at that well there you go guys there's some mealybugs for you i mean gosh darn it like I said, they're kind of cute little fuzzy fellers. Huh. Well, they're gonna be dead. Uh, anyway, that is so crazy. Can you believe that? Uh, I would spray it down, let it sit for five minutes, and then I'd rinse it off in the sink because spider mites really hate water. They really hate water. They don't wanna get rained on. They don't wanna get power blasted off there. Now don't have the pressure up too high. You don't wanna like spray the leaves off your plant, but, um, Using that diluted alcohol is a general care thing. I mean, I could do it for these mealybugs. I won't, because I'm just gonna pluck those little suckers off of there. I, you know, I'm kind of impressed because <laughs> I've never had mealybugs on anything but a cactus, so this is kind of special. Um, not for long. Another thing, what do we got? Just rinsing your plants and maybe spraying them with warm soapy water, that's another thing. Like just bathing your plants occasionally is just good for them anyway. It helps keep the dust off of them. It helps keep the leaves clean and shiny because if your leaves are dusty, they're not gonna photosynthesize as well because the light is preventing, or not the light, but the dust is preventing the light from getting to the leaf as efficiently. So um, consider bathing your plants, I don't know, maybe once a month. Maybe once a month, if you don't have too many. I mean, I have too many to do that with, but just consider maybe misting them, spraying them down, just really taking care of them, wiping those leaves down, because that's gonna help prevent these pests as well. Uh, I think that is really about, I've got a whole list of notes here, and I think I got through all of them. That's about all I have about this. Um, we've all, like I said, we've all had pests, and we've all done research and figured out different ways to do them. So. To my core group of people, this is your time. Uh, I'd love to see some comments about uh, pests that you've had on what kind of plants and how did you get rid of them? What are your best methods? Uh, I, Like I said, I try to stay more natural. I try not to do the insecticidal stuff, but you can. And I've got a bottle of it. I just have never used it. Uh, thank you guys so much for following me and subscribing and liking these videos. I really enjoy making them and I really enjoy interacting with you guys. This is very nice for me. I've been busy the last week or two, so I apologize if my videos haven't been as frequent. Uh, we're getting ready for Christmas uh, at Walmart and retail during the holidays is chaos. So uh, yeah, that's where I've been doing. Oh, and I went and saw Guns N' Roses in concert, which was a lot of fun. That is about it. Uh, one other quick shout out I will do here. Uh, some of the research I've done uh, on some of these pests has come from this. The Complete Houseplant Survival Manual by Barbara Pleasant. And this book is actually really good. It's got a lot of your basic plants in it. It has a lot about plant pests, propagation, um, plant decorating. It's just, it's a really comprehensive book. It's a pretty large book. It's got really nice color pictures in it. A lot of good information. My only complaint about this book Maybe there's a later edition, but this particular edition is from 2005. And as much as it pains me to say that something from 2005 is dated, <laughs> it is. I mean, I was a junior in high school. <sighs> That's scary. Uh, anyway, great book. Probably not very expensive. I recommend it. It's got a lot of good stuff in it. Okay, I'm done. This has turned into a 20-minute video, but that's okay. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I will... See you guys very soon. I'm gonna go take care of these mealybugs because I've embarrassed myself enough. And uh, yeah, you guys are toast. Thank you so much and I will see you guys soon. Thank you.